Hello everyone, we're in the studio today uh, to look at some of the guidelines um, for project one. Uh, this project is about mixing um, two chroma darks, one with a cool bias and one with a warm bias. Um, we'll mix these two uh, chroma darks using uh, burnt umber and a selection of either a warm blue, which is our thalo blue, uh, or a cool blue, which is ultramarine, and it is also um, Prussian blue. And if you look at the color list that you have in your textbook in chapter three, uh, which is materials and techniques, um, you can see the selections that you should be choosing for your warm and your cool blues. Okay, so now that we know a little bit more about um, our paint, uh, you should also have a um, palette knife and you should have um, a couple brushes. And I have a flat uh, and a filbert. And I believe these are also um, recommended uh, in the book. I also have my easy release tape um, and I have my um, bottle of uh, golden retarder. And the retarder is useful because it'll um, slow down the drying time of the acrylic paint, give you a little bit more time uh, to work out uh, each color. Uh, and, this, and this way it should make it a little easier and a little bit more efficient uh, for you to produce these value ranges that you'll need uh, to create your 11 step value scale. So with this equipment, I also have my two containers which will be used to uh, um, keep my paint uh, fresh. I have one for cool and uh, one for warm. All right, now that we know what we're gonna be using for our materials, I will uh, break out a couple palette choices that you might want to consider uh, for mixing all your paint uh, for these um, color projects. All right, so let's check that out. Okay, now that we've gone over our uh, quick review of the supplies that we're going to use uh, to make our two chroma darks, um, the next thing here is to, is to uh, choose what you want to use for uh, mixing your paint on, and typically that's a palette. Uh, so for this course, um, you can use basically anything you want for a palette. Uh, just keep in mind that um, some surfaces or uh, uh, materials are going to be more absorbent than others. So generally, when you're thinking about using a palette to mix paint, it's best to use something uh, that's a tough, uh, slick, right, and hard surface, preferably plastic, uh, glass, um, plasticized paper, uh, uh, um, a disposable picnic plate would work if it has sort of a plastic surface, wax paper will work um, as well. So there's lots of options for palettes, um, just, uh, you know, make a mindful choice about what you want to use so it's easy for cleanup uh, and efficient. Uh, for your projects. So for uh, this uh, mixing today, I'm going to use this piece of plexiglass. It's a piece I cut a while back for a palette. I'm going to lay it on this white piece of paper so I can kind of get a good idea of what my color looks like right when I'm mixing it out. Um, and another option is uh, you can take a piece of glass, uh, you can put a white backer on it and then tape it to make it a little bit more um, uh, protected I guess or durable um, and that's an option too so lots of palette choices uh, these are some and this is what I'm going to use today so for our next step uh, basically I'm going to make my choice of paints and what I'm going to use for our mixture today is ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber and I'm also going to be mixing in right my retarder so I can slow the drying time as I try to work through um, my values uh, when that time approaches. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, so at this point I have uh, my burnt umber and my ultramarine blue, and I'm basically going to mix these together in a ratio that will give me a uh, chroma dark, but that will be biased uh, toward the cool side um, of the spectrum. And then of course the next one that I mix, it will be mixed uh, 
toward the warm um, um, bias of the spectrum. Okay, now we're about um, ready to start mixing out our first uh, chroma dark, and uh, I'm going to mix out this uh, cool version first. I have my ultramarine blue, I have my uh, burnt umber, um, so I'm going to take a little bit, slide it over here, I'm going to take a little bit, and slide it into it, and I'm going to mix this up first. And this is the best way um, to mix out all your colors um, before you begin uh, your painting project. So you can establish um, a well-mixed combination so you know that you're achieving uh, the right hue and saturation uh, for uh, each color mixture. So as you can see, it's turning quite dark. Um, it may even look almost black. Um, and this is the mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine blue and our ultramarine blue uh, is considered cool uh, and the burnt umber is considered warm all right so I'm trying to mix out with this basically a cool uh, chroma dark so the bias is more toward the cool uh, and not the warm so I think I have that it still looks rather cool uh, to me. And I might have to add a little bit more burnt umber. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it, I'm gonna slide it over here. So I kind of get it out of the way a little bit. And then I will add a little bit more burnt umber uh, into the mixture because I don't want it to be too cool um, and I still want to have that darkness without having too much of a bluish um, bias in my chroma dark um, but these are things you should pay attention to when you're mixing each one out and remember um, you want enough in here to perhaps uh, fill half of this jar I think the recommendation by the author is uh, two ounces. Okay, so I about got this one where I want it. It's very thoroughly mixed, um, but I think it's a, still a little bit too cool. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I can see it here, right? Cause I have the white paper and kind of get a hint of it and you kind of see the, you kind of see the coolness in it, right? So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more um, burnt umber and of course as we move through each of these um, color theory and color composition puzzles uh, and projects uh, you want to consistently be um, sensitive and mindful um, to the colors that you're mixing out you know the value uh, the hue uh, and the saturation uh, which is also discussed in those first three chapters that you were supposed to read. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit more um, of some burnt umber. Let's see if I just uh, can take a little bit more of that coolness out of this mixture um, before I mix out my warm mixture. Um, so as you do this, remember, just pay attention, um, be sensitive, right? Um, to what the mix is producing as you add paint um, to the mixture and the color, of course, that you're adding. Um, and you should get some good results. Of course, the test here, um, when we have completed our mixtures, is we can create two circles um, next to each other, adding a little bit of white to each. Uh, and this should show you whether your mixture was cool or warm uh, when you take each mixture and set them side by side. Um, but at this point, we're just trying to mix out one cool uh, and one warm. And if you come to find out that both mixes are warm or both mixes are cool, 
you can always go back then to the one that's supposed to be cool, the one that's supposed to be warm, you can add more uh, burnt umber, right? Or more of the blue that you chose into your mixture to make it warmer or cooler. So this is the process. Um, I think I'm just about there and I'm gonna put this one in the jar uh, and then I'm gonna move on to my um, Chroma Dark mixture that's slightly warm or has a warm bias. All right, well, uh, that's it for now. I hope this helps you uh, understand a little bit about the process and how you're supposed to mix out uh, these colors for each of these exercises. And uh, the next step here then is to create that 11 step value scale uh, by mixing your cool and your warm together when they're completed to form uh, what the author calls a achromatic or neutral black or neutral dark. All right, so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.